you are about to watch a St. James sermon. Now, it's our prayer that as you watch the sermon, that time in God's Word will be a real blessing to you. But most importantly, that it will help you grow in your understanding of who God is and what it means to be a fully committed disciple of Jesus. Now, while we are super thankful for this online resource, we would love to meet you in person. So why not consider joining us on site at one of our services on a Sunday morning? We have one at 8 a.m. as well as 10 a.m. Being together with God's people is what church is really about. So we look forward to meeting you, getting to know you better, and also growing with you in becoming better disciples of Jesus. So why don't you think about joining us soon? For now, enjoy the sermon and God bless. Can I get a whoop whoop? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, we're going to do the news. Our first news item is for the adults in the room. On Wednesday, the 27th of September, we'll be having a combined growth group um, event in the molds, the DJ molds hall behind us. That's at half past seven to half past eight. It's going to be a really awesome time of Thanksgiving, fellowship, praise. It's going to be really cool. But before I do the next news item, I'm going to hand over to Rob. Yeah, two big celebrations coming up that I want to tell you about and ask for you to be involved. Um, so on the 29th of October, we have our big birthday Sunday celebration that we have every year. Um, this year, we want to go a little bit bigger than normal. Um, and so we want a sort of choir-ish on stage. Um, I'm calling it the Gheers Choir, okay? Just exercising my South Africanness, Gheers Choir. Um, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, so there's not going to be masses of rehearsals, maybe two. Um, so if you would like to be a part of that on the stage in a big block of singers, providing a bit of atmosphere up here for the celebration, come and speak to me about that one, okay? Just come and see me after the service. And then, this is the moment in the year when you all hate me because I mentioned Christmas. Yes, it's actually coming soon. Oh, this lot love Christmas. It's nice. It's good. Um, so Christmas is on the horizon as well. And this year, again, we want to do a, a multi-generational choir like last year. Um, everyone who was involved last year absolutely loved it. Um, so I fully expect all of those involved to be involved again this year. Um, but if, if, if you weren't involved last year and you would still love to be involved this year, um, then please come over here at the, end of the, at the end of the service. By that red stool, there's a little QR code. You can scan that QR code on your camera, um, and it should take you to a link that you can sign up or get more information from the Google form. If that doesn't work for you, come and speak to Jenny or myself. Um, and uh, yeah, we're going to have a great Christmas. Um, we'll have a slide up, or a couple slides actually, for Test Drive. Now, at St. James, we have a really thriving Kids ministry, we have like 200 kids coming through our doors every week. It's really great, but in order to effectively teach the children God's word, we do need a team big enough to support the number of children who come each and every week. Um, basically, what you're seeing there is our ideal number of leaders. Um, so the ideal number of leaders that we need in order to effectively do kids ministry at St. James that is the orange um, bar, and then the blue one is the actual number of leaders that we currently have. So we do have a deficit at the moment, but with your help, we can um, make it work. Okay. However, I'm not really surprised by that, because Jesus himself said that the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. At St. James, we have a huge harvest field, and I've been praying. There's a lot of people who have been praying. I hope you have been praying too, and I thank you for your prayers um, for our ministry. And if you feel like you've been looking for a place to serve, starting out at kids' ministry is a really great place to serve. It's not even a place to start out. Some people just serve there, and it's a great ministry. If you feel God is speaking to you, or if you've been considering where to serve, can I encourage you to join one of our test drive meetings, um, either on the 8th or the 15th of October. Uh, it will be directly after the 10 o'clock service, and you can sign up for that at the info desk in the, um, in the foyer after the service 
uh, or speak to me or to Jenny about it. And yeah, we'd love to have you be part of this team. Now it's time to say what's up, give a holla to the people around you, say hello. Um, and we're going to take up the collection now. So stewards, um, thank you very much. Now, G, I'm so glad I could get to start this fire early, man. Absolutely. Give me a chance. We need to get going here. The storm is it. coming we later. It. We yeah. got it. We got it. Yeah. So we just got to start this fire. Anyone want to? Why? How's it? Here we go. Nice. We just put him in here. Yeah. Oh, oh dear. Late. Late. No, no. The fire is going. Rookie. Yeah. Rookie. No, don't, G, don't hey, tell the me. The fire is going. What are we going to bright today? Uh, Springbok. <laughs> nah, man. Look here. Too soon, guys. Too Sorry. soon. Too soon. Too soon. Too soon. Too soon. Uh, no, no, too soon. Hey, the brass, the brass gain here. I hope it stays in this drum. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But um, how good is it that we can have some friends here with us and, um, and the smoke is going up and it's Heritage Day and I'm not worried about this at all, to be honest. <laughs> and, um, and it's a public holiday tomorrow, which means we have no staff meetings. I mean, sure. I'm so excited. Yo, that's lit. That means we pray today and we pray tomorrow. Mm -mm. Pray yesterday, today, and tomorrow. That's I right. I had such a lick of time praying yesterday. Although, I don't know who was doing the praying, my mom or Ireland. Yo, oh, I like it. Keep coming. Malika. And I see your nails are green. You mustn't. Nah, don't do that, man. Okay. Uh, uh, Robin, yo, you heavy antisocial. Why are you on your phone? Oh, sorry, guys. Uh, I just have an important message that I got you quickly. I need to check. Away, guys. I'm trying this new video note on WhatsApp to send you a message to remind you about my party coming up. Just to let you know everything is ready for the party. The platters, the samosas, the dal cheese, the masala steak Gatsby. Chez is ready to see you. I can't wait for you to be at my party. Okay, I'll see you later. But now, how do I switch this thing off here, man? Sure. Yo, Chez is having a party and the man is on point. He's got everything ready, but I see he's lazy. He sent all of us the same message. Mm -hmm. You don't want to type a Chizzy. private message. That's okay, so ladies. I'm just excited to have a bride with Chez and all of you guys. So, sure. uh, yeah, who's going to come, guys? Uh, sorry, shame. Um, yeah, I've already got plans this afternoon. I actually have to go do my nails. Uh, oh. So, oh. Oops, girls got to look good, eh? Please start, Chazy. I can't come. Sorry, guys. Oh, Rob. But like, are you coming, right? <laughs> mm, sorry, you know I'm a choreographer. I've got to go to my dance studio and teach them. Oh, the okay. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> please tell Chazy I can't come. Uh, okay, it's, okay a, it's a boy's yeah. bride, Lance. Lance. You are gents, uh, update just dropped for Fortnite. I must have downloaded it before. No cheating. I can't. You are gents. Tell Chizzy, tell Chizzy, I'm sorry. Oh, How swack is that? I mean, Chizzy's it's... got everything ready. Yeah. And they all just made excuses why they're not going to go. You, me, and Chiz. You and me. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's it. That's right, yeah. yeah. But, but you know, late, it actually reminds me of a story that Jesus once told. Jesus once told a parable of a great banquet, yeah. a great feast, a great braai, and I think it's time for us to hear that story. Jean is going to read it for us up on the screens, and this is the time, boys and girls, especially where you guys need to pay careful attention to the pictures that will come up on screen as Jean reads for us. We're in Luke chapter 14. It's all up there. Have a listen. Today's reading comes from Luke chapter 14, starting at verse 15 from the NIV version. When one of those at the table with him heard this, he said to Jesus, Blessed is the man who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. Jesus replied, A certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said, I have just bought a field and I must go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I have just bought five yoke of oxen, and I'm on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. Still another said, I just got married, so I can't come. The servant came back and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and ordered his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the cripple, the blind and the lame. Sir, the servant said, what you ordered has been done, but there's still room. Then the master told his servant, Go out to the roads and the country lanes and make them come in, so that my house will be full. I tell you, not one of those men who were invited will get a taste of my banquet. Here ends the reading of God's word. Now, boys and girls, sure, okay. Uh, 
Boys and girls, that Bible reading that Auntie Jean did for us comes about halfway in Luke chapter 14. So to make sure that we understand what's going on, let us have a quick look at what is actually happening in the story in Luke chapter 14 so far. Before our section, which Auntie Jean read for us, in chapter 14 verse 1, Jesus is having a meal at the home of a religious leader called the Pharisee. And with him in his home is all his religious friends. But this meal was actually a setup. They weren't being that hospitable to Jesus. They were actually looking for a way to trap Jesus, to make Jesus look bad. And so throughout the dinner, it tells us that the guests were watching Jesus carefully to see him make a mistake. And Jesus knows this. So he addresses the people at this dinner party And in verse 7, it tells us that what Jesus did is he actually turns it around and he starts watching them very closely at their own dinner party. And what Jesus sees, he does not like. What Jesus sees is that the guests at this party have a wrong understanding of who gets into the kingdom of God. And to help the guests at this dinner party, Jesus tells two stories called parables to help them and actually to help us this morning understand who gets into the kingdom of God and who it is that will not get into the kingdom of God. So as we look at the story, there is an encouragement for all of us this morning, which Gareth is going to show us right now, but there's also a warning from the story which you must all hear a bit later as well. So our encouragement from the story today is that it is a wonderful encouragement that you're going to remember with three Bs, boys and girls. The first is a big invitation. Do it with me. A big invitation for Baya Mensa for a blessed feast. Hey, a big invitation for buy a mensa and a blessed feast. Well done, multicultural church. It's a big invitation, number one. Why is it such a big invitation? We heard that it comes from a certain man. This certain man is a very important man. We can see that he's important because he has a servant whom he sends to send out the invitation. He's important because he has clearly lots of space at his table. He has a table from which uh, all the food will be available, and we see that he is able to host a great banquet. The banquet is great because there's lots of food. All your favorite food will be there. It'll be high quality food, the best of food. Your favorite desserts will be there. It will be the best. And of course, the master of the banquet himself is going to be there. Who could be the master of the banquet in this story that Jesus tells? God is the master of the banquet. And so it's a big invitation because you're invited to come and feast with Him. Who is invited? Well, what did we say? By a mensa. So in verse 21, the servant goes out and the master of the banquet says, Go and invite all sorts of different people. Go and invite the poor. Go and invite the lame. Go and invite the blind. Go and invite the cripple. The invite goes to all sorts of people. And these are the people that we don't often notice. These are the people that we don't often love, that we don't often care for. But these are people whom God loves and whom God cares for. They are people who are humble. They are people who know that they are in need. And so the invitation goes out to all of them. They are invited to feast with the king. But the servant comes back in verse 22, and he says what? There is room for more. And so what does the servant do? The servant goes out. He goes outside of his street. He goes outside of his neighborhood. He goes outside of his country. He calls the outsiders. They are all invited to come and feast with the king. And what type of feast is this going to be? A blessed feast. We've had a big invitation for buy a mensa, and it's for a blessed feast. I've been practicing. You see in verse 15 that one of the guests at the dinner table says, 
Blessed is the one who will feast in the kingdom of God. This feast is a blessing because it is with God in His kingdom. What does it mean that it is a blessed feast? Well, it means that those who come will be fully satisfied. Those who come will be in the presence of the King. And those who come will find comfort and safety in His kingdom. This is a blessed feast and a wonderful encouragement. Everyone who is invited will be fully satisfied and safe with the King. But, as Leighton said, there is also a serious warning in this passage. And so over to Leighton to warn us. Thanks, G. That was super encouraging. Do you guys remember those actions? Let's see. Okay, not by your first. We're going big first. Yeah. <laughs> Then buy a and a blessed feast. What a super encouragement that is for us. But boys and girls and moms and dads as well, did you know that that story actually ends on a scary note? Listen to verse 24. For I tell you, none of these men who were invited shall taste my banquet. Jesus is saying that just because you have received an invitation does not mean that you're automatically seated at the table and part of God's kingdom. And this is where the warning in the story comes. In the story Jesus tells, we see at the end of verse 16 that the host invited many, by a man, sir, as Gareth showed us. But the invite itself does not get them into the party. Look at verse 17. At the time of the banquet, he sent the servant to tell those who have been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. What gets them into this great banquet? It's responding to the invite by coming, by actually going to the party. And notice that they must go now because everything is ready. The invite requires an urgent response. Come now. But how do some of the people who have the invite respond? Well, verse 18 tells us, but they all alike began to make excuses. Reasons for why they can't go. And the reasons actually aren't evil ones. It's not like they're choosing not to go because they are going to go and rob, pick and pay Rosmead, or they are going to go steal the matric exam so that they can all pass at the end of the year. They bought a field, property. They bought some oxen, like a machine, a a farming machine uh, in those days. Uh, they just got married. Not a bad excuse. And notice they're not even being rude. Please excuse me. So they're actually being quite polite in that sense. Nevertheless, though, those reasons which Jesus actually calls excuses, they put off the invitation and choose not to go. And because they've chosen not to go, it means that they will not be at the feast. Now, what does all of this mean for us? Now, boys and girls, remember, at the start, who was Jesus having dinner with? Can you remember? Who? Any boys and girls? Who was Jesus having dinner with? I see your hand. Can you shout nice and loud? Is that Marcus? Marcus? Pharisee. Oh, Marcus, you've got a future, my boy. Yes. Okay, well done. Good listening. Jesus was having dinner with the Pharisees, right, who were very religious people. These people would have had knowledge about God. They would have known what God's Word says. They would have been at church every Sunday. And because of their religious background, they thought that automatically they will be part of this banquet and be in God's kingdom. And we see this in the attitude of one of the guests in verse 15. When one of those at the table with him heard this, he said to Jesus, Blessed is the one who will eat in the feast in the kingdom of God. Jesus says, No. What a wingman. Uh, just like in the story, if people choose not to go, they won't be at the party. For these guests, if they choose not to accept Jesus, they will not be in the kingdom. No matter how religious they are, 
and no matter how good their reasons for not accepting Jesus may seem. And that's why Jesus tells them this story to warn them, but also to warn us, dear friends. Coming to St. James, going to kids' club, coming to youth, being part of growth groups is not the same as accepting Jesus. You can be here every Sunday, every Friday. You could have been baptized, confirmed. You got married here in the church. If you have not actually properly accepted God's invite by accepting Jesus, you're not part of his kingdom. Don't assume or presume that you're going to be in the feast just because of the stuff you know or do. Don't be like the guests who assume that they will be in and then end up making excuses for not actually going. Listen to Jesus' warning and come to him. Respond to the invitation that God has sent out by responding to Jesus. Come into Jesus now, today, today, not tomorrow or maybe on Wednesday, today. Why? Because everything is ready. He's died on the cross, sins forgiven. We will be with him in heaven, eternity with him forever. That is ready. So respond to Jesus now. As Gareth encouraged us, the invitation is open to all, that's true, but only to those who want to come and actually choose to come. So what will you do with this great invitation today? Will today be yet another excuse for why you can't come to him? Your busy schedule, your hobby, your sport, your work, your family, your home renovations, your kids, your social media platforms. All good things, but good things that are bad things if it stops you coming to Jesus. Or will today be the day where for the first time, you might be sitting here for years, but for the first time, you actually come to Jesus and enjoy being part of His kingdom. Today we've seen in our passage that there is a wonderful encouragement, a big invitation for Biomenta to a blessed feast. But we've also seen that there is a serious warning. And so we ask you that if you're a visitor today, that perhaps today might be the day that you respond and that you come. Because the invite has gone to all of us. The invite has gone beyond our neighborhood. It's gone to the edges of the earth. And if you're an outsider to the kingdom of God, well, then you've heard the invite, and you're invited. So we want to ask you and encourage you to consider responding. Come chat to myself or Lates afterwards. We'd love to get to know you. We'd love to help you uh, to come and join us at the feast in the kingdom of God. I'm going to pray for us now. While I pray, the band will come up. All the helpers for the band, you come up also. Because uh, soon we'll be singing a song about how Jesus is the king of the whole world. From Japan to Milan to Uzbekistan. Uh, Jesus is the King. And uh, so I'm going to pray for us now. Eyes closed, boys and girls, hands together. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for your big invitation. We thank you that it goes out to everyone. And we pray that people will respond so that they can join you at a feast in the kingdom of heaven. A feast that will never end. A feast where we will be fully satisfied and we will, we will be in uh, the safety of our great God and King. We thank you that Jesus is King of the world. And as we sing praises to him now, will you be uh, honored and glorified by our words. And so we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.